So now President Bola Tinubu led other dignitaries, ch uh, security chiefs and invited guests to commemorate the nation's fallen heroes at the 2024 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. The event, which took place at the National Arcade Eagle Square, Abuja, is the first to be superintended by President Bola Tinubu following his assumption into office in May 29th. The ceremony, which marked the grand finale of the 2024 celebrations, maintained its very solemn and highly regimental nature. This involves the symbolic laying of wreaths at the feet of the unknown soldier by dignitaries, firing of volleys and the signing of the register. The celebration is commemorated on the 15th of January every year to honor the fallen heroes who paid the supreme price in the line of duty serving the nation. Arise analyst Dayo Shobuale joins us now to discuss the Armed Forces Remembrance Day and the need to improve the welfare of retired military personnel. Good afternoon, Mr. Shobuale. It's a brand new week. Welcome to Newsday. Hi, it's a pleasure being here as usual. All right, let's get straight into this very important conversation. You know, it's often easy for us to get carried away with the state of insecurity in the nation, but we have to remember that there are armed forces who are doing their level best and uh, wonderful ladies and gentlemen in uniform who are staking their lives daily. Uh, what are your sentiments on this very uh, thoughtful day? Well, the we, we Remembrance Day is a day to honor those who have patriotically in the line of duty laid down their lives for their country. And the normal thing all over the world is to look after the families they have left behind. And you see, in some other places, when people go to war, like the one going on in Gaza now, the Israelis are asking for the return of their hostages the hostages, the, the Israeli hostages, because they show the value of human lives. In war, if you have watched films, you will see some soldiers, if any of them is shot, they will struggle to bring back the wounded body so it doesn't fall into any hands. So similarly, if people fight our wars and keep us safe and secure, we should be able to look after their families after they are gone. But uh, that is not being very well done in Nigeria. Uh, the person whose speech, whose speech really got to me was the chief of uh, defense staff. And he was very blonde. He said, Niger you know, the army and the military personnel will continue to serve uh, Nigeria bravely and committedly and patriotically and that uh, they will do their best to look after those they have left behind. And they thank the president, anyway, for looking after those they have left behind. So that is the beauty of the situation. But you see, in remembering those who are dead, the date matters. Remembrance Day, historically, is November 11th. November 11th. That was after the First World War. But if you remember the history of the First World War, the, the way the victors celebrated and uh, apportioned the spoils of war led to the rise of Germany and the rise of Hitler in Germany and the Second World War. And people are still marking the Re Remembrance Day. And that's why you have people who are in for peace. I think the British mark Remembrance Day more than any other type of people. But you see, in Nigeria, I want to question the use of January 15 as our Remembrance Day. January 15 gives some of us bad memory in Nigeria. It was the day that the first coup happened. And Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, Madhu Bello, and many other military officers were murdered in that coup. It led to civil war. The civil war ended on uh, Another January 15, get me? And now, January 15 is being made our, our remembrance day. I want this president or the Nigerian government to take another look at that. I want them to take another look at that. Because before the Civil War, but the Civil War, the, the punks and the scars of the Civil War are still there. Because IPOB is there, still trying to claim 
what the war was all about in the courts, not on the battlefields. So, and if you look at it, um, the person who made January 15th, the Remembrance Day in Nigeria, was the person that collected the surrender of Biafra on the same date in 1970. That's all the same So we need to look, to take another look at it. Just as we changed our Democracy Day, we changed our Democracy Day from, uh, anyway, we changed our de Democracy to June 12. You get me? So we should find a way, and that was done by another military ruler who became a civilian president, that uh, Buhari, to so June 12, from June, uh, May 29 to June 12. So it's high time we did something too about this Remembrance Day. I would suggest our October 4th anniversary date is sufficient for us to remember our independence as a nation and how to move forward in looking after uh, descendants of our uh, uh, families of our uh, armed, armed forces people who fell in battle. Especially now, I think security is rampant in the northeast, in the northwest, north central. People are dying. People are dying. And according to some reports I read, even those who have died in so many battles, about 20, 30 years ago, their descendants have not been paid. So it's high time the living took care of those left behind by the dead. Let's leave it at that for now. Great, Mr. Shabba, thank you for your observation. Of course, it was also observed November 11 preceding this um, this date, January 15th, but away from that, um, there was a, a real estate firm that's based in Abuja that donated plots of land to the widows and the families of, of the fallen. I'm, I'm just bringing up that gesture, I'll tie it up with this. But the chief of army staff has also reassured the troops that the wealth, their welfare is, you know, top priority and top notch. But if you're going to take, if we're going to take except of what he said, he said the, that the troops should be on the lookout as more efforts to improve the standards of living and the accommodation across um, the barracks and cantonment will soon become visible in the new year. It doesn't look like he's going into specifics regarding what these improvements will actually be. But we're looking at other you know, private firms that are taking similar gestures to show appreciation for the troops. So is it time that we start to hear about specifics from the Chief of Army staff? Or are you content with what he said about um, the welfare? Welfare is generic. Look, uh, if people are short in action, they left families in the barracks somewhere. Children who need to go to school. Uh, uh, wife and children who need accommodation, mm -hmm. who need rehabilitation. See, see they have, uh, they have uh, resettlement and rehabilitation centers. In, uh, I think once in Nigeria and literally all over the country. You see, what they are trying to do is to make sure that their children get educated like normal families, and that, you know, the, the wives are looked after. The land you spoke about is about cemeteries. They have got in cemeteries to bury dead soldiers and all that. Yes, there's no, no doubt about it. Give the dead a befitting burial. But look after the living. That means, see, if, uh, uh, I don't know, if government will not complain, because it's due to be an admission of failure on the part of government, they should set up, set up security trust fund too for descendants, dependents, no, dependents of those who have fallen in uh, many battles all over the, the north and the middle bed. Because on a daily basis, people are being killed. I'm not talking of ransom now, because you see some people are even supporting that they, they should contribute money to ransom. To, to kidnap us, and yet they still kill people. That's a different thing. These are people who soldiers don't know if they will return from battles, just like policemen. Eh, they should be given insurance. That is insurance. That if and when they do not come back from battles, they, they feel secure. In fact, that's an incentive for them to want to die. Because to die on the battlefield 
fighting gallantly, to be given gallants. Having, because there's an editorial in this day today talking of gallants, which is wrong. They are given gallants, not gallants. So essentially, what the chief of defense staff has said is what matters. And he has thanked the president. The president should have the Ministry of Defense to look after the families and dependents of people who die in action fighting for the welfare of all Nigerians. These are people in the armed forces and this is their remembrance day. Which again, I feel should be reviewed not based on the controversial January 15th date. And just to reiterate your point, you know, when the Chief of Army Staff spoke, he said welfare tops the priority of his agenda for the Nigerian Army. When we look at the budget 2024, uh, defense is the biggest line item uh, on that budget. Where do you think we are missing it with regards to, you know, us awarding this huge budget for defense? However, the welfare of, uh, you know, before we even speak of the families of those who have departed, those who are living and serving in the army themselves uh, are, are in need of, you know, improved welfare, improved conditions of living, of service, of so forth. You know, uh, Mr. Shobuale, how do you think that that we can improve our model that we currently have to make sure our armed forces uh, truly are taken care of and that their state also reflects the fact that they are the most important part of our budget currently. They are the most important part of the budget because of this high state of insecurity in the country. Get me? That doesn't have much to do with how they look after dependence of uh, the people we are remembering today on Remembrance Day. The high budget, nobody will query it because of the state of insecurity. And that one is meant for weaponry to arm them so that they don't get killed. They don't get to the field and see that the terrorists have better munition than them. That is different from what we are talking about. <laughs> In fact, if it is possible, you may want to fight a war where nobody is killed. That's the ultimate. But then accidents do happen. Even the best of well kept, uh, uh, well, well planned strategy aimed at defeating the enemy. See, the defense budget is okay and it shows it's a right model. Do you get me now? Buying the correct equipment and deploying it strategically and managing it efficiently to defeat the economy and uh, to feed, defeat the enemy. That is the ultimate goal. You get me? And we pray that manifest and we defeat the. So, and that inadvertently and unexpectedly, if our people die, we look after their families. That's what Remembrance Day is all about. So it's not a matter of murder, it's a matter of the spirit of execution and using that body judiciously. That's it. Well, we'd like to thank you for your time as always, Mr. Shawala. And hopefully the dates will be reviewed since you've made some very um, significant points regarding the current. I have been promoted now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Why did you stop me from promoting? Uh, Please change the date. <laughs> Sign, Mr. Shimawali. Thank you. Thank you so much.